Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome back to J. Crew. Yes, this is J. Crew and another beautiful day that God has blessed us with to come together and study another portion of his word. Boys and girls, I pray that you have had a blessed, good week. And as we get ready to go into the word of God, I pray that you will prepare your heart to receive the word of God so there be a seed planted into your hearts that produces roots and bear much fruit. It is God's desire that we bear much fruit. Jesus says if we abide in him and his word abide in us, we will bear much fruit, and without him, we can do nothing. Amen? Amen. So I pray that you will prepare your hearts to receive the word of God so that you can be fruitful in your life. Amen? Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And as we get ready to go into your word, I pray that you will bless your word, dear Lord. May it go forth, dear Lord, and reach the hearts and minds of your children and, and bless their spirits, dear Lord. And I pray that it will inspire your children, dear Lord, to want to know you more personally. You said if we draw closer to you, you will draw closer to us, dear Lord. And, and as we do draw closer to you, dear Lord, it become more apparent as to the things that we need to change, the things that we need to do. And um, Lord, I pray that we would do those things, turn from those things which are wrong and turn to the things which are right to bring you honor and glory. Bless this time that we have together. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. So boys and girls, we're going to pause for a moment and then go right into the word. Amen. Amen. Hello there, boys and girls. My name is Miss Moles, and I am happy that we're back together again for another amazing Bible lesson coming from my house to your house. Are you ready? Today we have a dynamic Bible lesson. So let's pray first. Our hands we fold so tightly, and our heads we bow so gently. Dear God, thank you that we're back together again to learn something from your holy book. Bless all the boys and girls who are watching. Help them to be good listeners. Teach them, O oh Lord, how we can trust you because you always keep your promises. Please bless this lesson in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, boys and girls, we have a dynamic story for you. Are you ready for it? Well, first, I need to show you some things that will be in the story. So when you hear the story, you can listen for those things that I'm going to show you. But before that, we know that all our stories come from God's holy book, the Bible. And the Bible is the true word of God. We can believe everything that's in the Bible because everything God says is true. And the Bible is God's big story of how he plans to save the world through his son, Jesus Christ. Now, our story today comes from the book of Genesis. Now, Genesis is the very first book in the Old Testament. And our story comes from I have it marked in my Bible. I'll show you. The book of Genesis, chapter 22. That's where our story comes from today. And the name of our story is Abraham and Isaac. Abraham and Isaac. So I want you to get ready to listen. Now I'm going to show you some things that's in the story. And I want you to look at them. And then as I tell you the story, Every time you hear me say something of one of these items I'm going to show you, I want you to clap. Okay? Now, let me show you some things that will be in the story. Wood. Fire. Right here. You see it? Pretend fire, not real fire. And in the story, you will hear about an animal. Do you know the name of this animal? It's a ram. Look at the big, thick, curved horns on this ram. Okay, also in the story, I'm going to show you some money. Now, money is not in the story today, but it's what's on the money that I'm going to show you. First, this is a quarter. You've seen a quarter before. And this is a nickel. And I have 
a penny. And I also have a dollar bill. Now, why did I show you this money? That's because on all this money that I show you and the money that you spend to buy things, they all have four important words on them about God. And those words say, and I see them right here, in God we trust. In God we trust. If you look closely on a penny, you can see those same words right across the top of the penny that say, in God we trust. Did you know that? Well, as you listen to the story, you're going to hear me talk about trusting in God. And remember, as I tell the story, you are to clap when you hear me talk about these things I just showed you. Wood, fire, the animal, ram, and when you hear me saying, God, we trust. Here we go. Now, the name of our story is Abraham and Isaac. Abraham is the father and Isaac is the son. Well, God loved Abraham. And one day, long ago, God gave Abraham a promise. He told Abraham that he and his wife, Sarah, would one day have a son. So Abraham and Sarah waited many years. But at the right time, God kept his promise. Guess what? Abraham and his wife, Sarah, had a son and they named him Isaac. In fact, when they had the son, Sarah was 90 years old and Abraham was 100 years old, the Bible tells us. So they waited a long time. And sometimes we have to wait a long time, but God kept his promise. Well, the story goes on to say that as Isaac got a little bigger, God decided he would test Abraham to see if Abraham would trust in God and if he would obey God. And the Bible tells us right here that one day God spoke from heaven to Abraham and he said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the mountain where I will show you and you will use him as an offering. Well, Abraham did not argue. He did not ask God, well, why do I have to take my son to be an offering? Abraham obeyed God. And the Bible says that the very next morning, Abraham loaded up his donkey, pretend you're loading up the donkey, put all the things he would need. And then he took two servants, the donkey, and then he took Isaac. And they started walking to the mountain that God told Abraham he would show him. So let's make walking sounds. So Abraham and Isaac and his servants and the donkey started walking. They walked. And they walked. And they walked. And then they stopped. And Abraham told his servants, wait here. And Isaac and I will go to the mountain to worship. And when we finish, we will come back to you. So the servant stayed behind and Abraham and his son Isaac kept walking to the mountain. They were going to the mountain that God had showed Abraham to go to, where he would use his son Isaac as an offering for God. They walked and they walked. And while they were walking, Isaac turned around and then he asked his father Abraham a question. He said, we have the wood and we have the fire. 
pretend fire. And Isaac said, we have the wood and we have the fire for the offering, but where is the lamb? And Abraham answered his son and he said, God will provide a lamb for the offering, my son. So they kept walking and Abraham had given Isaac the wood to carry. Are you clapping? And Abraham carried the fire. Isaac carried the wood for the offering. Abraham carried the fire. And then they finally made it to the mountain where God has shown Abraham to go. And then the Bible said that Abraham was obeying God. He laid Isaac on top of the wood. And just as he laid Isaac on top of the wood and was about to offer Isaac as an offering, the Bible says that God called out to Abraham from heaven and the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven and he said, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham said, here I am. And the angel of the Lord said, do not lay a hand on the boy. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld your son, your only son. And guess what? Abraham looked up, and when he looked up, he saw a ram caught in a bush, and he couldn't get loose. Well, guess what? God had provided a ram for Abraham to use as an offering on the altar. He did not want him to use Isaac. So Abraham offered the ram on the altar right here to God. And you know what, boys and girls? Since Abraham trusted in God and he obeyed God, God made two important promises to Abraham. First, the Bible says that he told Abraham, because you have did not hold your only son from me, he said, I will bless you and give you a big family. They will be as many as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashore. Too many to count. And then God made Abraham another promise. He said, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Because Abraham trusted God. He obeyed God. He was willing to give his only son, Isaac, whom he loved, as an offering to God. But God provided a ram in a bush so that Abraham could use the ram to sacrifice as an offering to God. Isn't that a wonderful story? Abraham loved his son, and he was willing to give his only son, Isaac, as an offering to God. But God told Abraham to use, not to hurt a, uh, Isaac. He gave a ram in the bush, and Isaac, Abraham used the ram as an offering to God. Isn't that an amazing story? And you know what? We know God keeps his promises. And even though Abraham did not give his only son as an offering, but God loved us so much that he gave us his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross. And after Jesus died on the cross for our sins, he was buried in a tomb. But on the third day, God raised him from the dead, and he made a promise to the world. God said that all who believe in Jesus and what he did on the cross for our sins, God promised that we too who believe in Jesus 
that he rose from the dead, we would one day live in heaven with God and with Jesus as our forever friend. And we know that God will one day keep his promise, just as he kept his promises to Abraham. And he also made a promise in the Old Testament that he would send his only son to down the cross to save the world from sin. And did he keep that promise? Yes, he did. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that story because I have some questions to ask you to see if you remember. Are you ready? The first question is, and I have my question card. You see the question marks and the word questions? The first question, does God keep his promises? Yes, God always keeps his promises. Sometimes people don't always keep their promises, do they? But God always keeps his promises. Next question. God gave Abraham and Sarah a baby boy. What was his name? Isaac. That's right. Next question. What did God ask Abraham to do about Isaac? That's a tough one. Remember? God asked Abraham to give his only son Isaac as an offering. Next question. What did Isaac ask Abraham when they were on their way to the mountain that God had showed his father? Isaac said, we have the wood and we have the fire, but where is the lamb for the offering? That's what he asked, didn't he? Okay. Well, what did Abraham say to Isaac? He said, God will provide a lamb for the offering, my son. The last question, what did God provide for Abraham? He provided a ram in the bush to use as the offering for God. Isn't that an amazing story? We can trust God. And because Abraham obeyed God, the Bible tells us that God made two promises to Abraham. The first promise he made to Abraham is that he would give Abraham a big family that would be so big, they would be like the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore, too many to count. And then God gave Abraham another promise. And the Bible said he promised Abraham that all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Yay! We know that God loves us so much that he gave his only son, Jesus, didn't he? And because Abraham trusted in God and he obeyed God, he made two promises. And we know that God keeps his promises. Well, I need to ask you something. Sometimes uh, we have our friends or other people we love to make promises. But sometimes they may not keep those promises. They may forget or they may have wanted to, but just didn't get a chance. But guess what? When we ask, when we believe in God, even though people may not always keep their promises, but God always keeps his promises, doesn't he? Well, boys and girls, that's the end of our story. You were good listeners. And to help you remember this story, I'm going to teach you a song called, I Will Trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord, and I hope this song will help you to remember our story. Now, when we say trust, I want you to make a letter T with your index fingers. And when we say obey, I want you to make it O 
for obey. And when we say, I, I want you to do this. And we say, Lord, do this. Look up. Here we go. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord every day, every day. I will obey the Lord. I will obey the Lord. I will trust and obey the Lord every day, every day. Good singing, boys and girls. Now, before we say our closing prayer, I'm going to ask you to do something. Remember the coins I showed you in the dollar bill? I won't call it homework, but when our story is over, ask your parents or an adult to help you find a coin and look for those four words. Do you remember what they say? In God we trust and keep that coin close by in your room so you can look at it and always remember that we should trust in God. Well, it's time to go, so let's pray. Dear God, Thank you so much for this story today. Lord, thank you for being our provider. Thank you for always keeping your promises. Help us to trust and obey you just like Abraham did, no matter what. In the name of Jesus, amen. Well, boys and girls, until next time, it's time for us to do what we always do on account of three. That is to send a good bye hug to everyone watching. One, two, three. Goodbye. See you next time.